Hi everyone, it's Chad Bowen, another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Arbor Realty Trust, which is a relatively small cap at just over $2 billion mortgage real estate investment trust based in the United States. It acts as a direct lender, provides loan origination and servicing for mainly the multifamily demographic, trading at a reasonable valuation, much lower than it normally trades for. The most interesting part of this business by far is it's almost 14% dividend yield at the minute, which is primarily due to a significant decline in the stock in March 2023 and throughout the year, really in the last year, it's been down around 26%, but there was a significant decline in March 2023 upon the publishing of a short sell report, which we're going to talk about a bit later, what I think of that. Right now, it's 20% off its 52-week low, but still way off its 52-week high. Lots to be spoken about with this business. I'm going to get into it, tell you what I think of this business, what I think of the short report, and where I think it's worth the risk for that 14% dividend and a chance to, for this business to bounce back. For those who don't know much about Arbor, it's one of the nation's leading Fannie Mae lenders and Freddie Mac seller services. It has won multiple awards, particularly for its excellence in technology as far as multifamily lenders go, which is the majority of what it does. It is one of the premier multi multifamily lenders in the country. It's a top 10 lender by volume for more than a decade in the multifamily lender space. Now for the report itself. It was published by NG Research. It, caused the business to drop 10% the day of reporting ahead of an overall drop in March of 24%. Now, there was a couple of other things, catalysts going on in March, the banking crisis being one. So cynically, you can't say that Ninja timed this very well to cause maximum decline in Arbor stock. I'm not, of course, saying that. Now, the report itself is more than 40 pages. No one really wants to read that. It was a real pain reading it, to be honest. So I'll just summarise some of the claims on the right-hand side, basically the, the first thing that appears on the page that they've saying. And the long and short of it is they believe that Ar Arbor have committed some financial impropriety to hide toxic assets. They believe they've used companies' escrow balances and revenues are disappearing. They believe it's like Archegos Capital where there's a real downside risk of up to 67%, they believe. They had negative book value up to 2017. And that Arbor claims superiority to its peers on based on that financial impropriety. They have a very long list of concerns, just a few of which are on the right, like hiding a toxic real estate portfolio. Arbor immediately responded, strongly condemned the report. I believe this may have generated quite a serious mis mispricing. Arbor said, I'm quoting, this false and inflammatory report is a transparent effort to mislead the public for the purpose of enabling Ninji and its affiliates to profit from short positions on Arbor's stock. The day after, March the 15th, the CEO of Arbor bought over 120,000 shares in the company, which tells you what he thinks of this. He thinks this has generated a mispricing as the stock went down to around $12 and was even cheaper not long after that. Personally, I'm not a fan of short sellers generally, so I kind of fall on this side that short reports like this are often an immediate way of generating some alpha for the, for the company. And looking at all the articles that have been around this and I've read the short report myself, I really don't think it holds water for me. One of the big problems I have with short seller reports is I think they're opportunistic and also that the market normally takes them as gospel. Anytime a short seller report comes out, whether it's nonsense or not, the stock is going to drop. We saw that with Block recently. Now, Ninji is not Hindenburg Research. It's not Muddy Waters. It was founded in just 2022. It's research... Its website is very difficult to navigate and doesn't seem to be able to provide me with any way of contacting anyone other than the team, the general team. It doesn't really say oh, anyone who runs it. This is not does not have the weight behind it of a Hindenburg report or a Muddy Waters report, and yet the business is dropping 10%, 25% on the month. For me, it just seems opportunistic at the time when there was the ongoing banking crisis and it just seemed a chance to generate some alpha. Additionally, the short report is really badly written. It's criticising Ernest and Young, which I don't think of the thing. It uses some pretty choice language, in my opinion. I just don't think it really holds water. For me, Arbor does have a history of being maybe not the strongest in its field, but a strong competitor in its field. It, again, produced decent earnings, gap net income of $0.46 cents per diluted share. This was higher than it was the previous quarter. They raised the cash dividend to $0.42 cents per share, a 5% increase. It's now a 68% payout ratio of its distributable earnings. Strong liquidity position with $785 million in cash versus a $2.2 billion market cap. They've announced a $50 million share repurchase program and they were buying at pretty much the lows 
of what they believe is a 17% discount to book value. Right now it's trading at about book value based on that. I think the results are excellent. I think this is a business that just continues to perform well in not, not an easy industry right now. And on the whole, over the last 10 years or so, this business has performed admirably. It's not an amazing business by any means, but in this field, these results are very strong. It's trailing 12 months dividend yield, is often over 5% and has floated over 10% in the past. It's never been as high as this. It's dividend payout has just gone up and up and up over the long term. It's not a dividend risk account. Occasionally, the payout has gone down, but that's nothing to be concerned about. These are just really bumps in the road. Uh, that payout ratio went down, or the payout itself went down in 2020. No price for guessing why that went down. The stock price has been a bit all over the place, but it was as low as around $2.50, and it has been as high as $15 over the last 10 years. It's been an excellent performer, up over 400% over the last 10 years, and has rewarded shareholders very happily. Now let's look at valuation. Obviously, the business is down over 25% this year, so these valuation numbers are starting to look quite attractive in my opinion you look at its five-year averages that's where i think it's best to compare these two it's five-year average for trailing price to earnings it's just shy of 10 it's currently seven five-year average for price to cash flow on a trailing basis around 16 it's currently 12 and a five-year average for price to book value which is perhaps the best indicator here it's around 1.35 when currently it's around 0.93 so trading under book value for a respectable business in my opinion. I don't think the returns are going to blow the doors off going forward. I think this is a difficult industry, don't get me wrong. However, I think there's been quite an obvious mismarriage here. It's not bargain cheap by any means. This business has traded for a price of book below one in 2017, as you can see, and it's not absolutely bargain territory. Price of cash flow at times in 2022 was under five, around two and a half there. But I think this is a reasonable valuation for this business. I think it's important to remember that not all short sellers are made equal and these are allegations and short sellers are not often doing this out of the goodness of the heart. They are there to make money just like regular long investors are. For me, I don't think these allegations particularly hold water and it wouldn't be enough to dissuade me from not investing in this business. I'm not investing in this business because I have a healthy allocation to REITs already and I'm quite happy with that. However, if this goes any further, I may have to invest just because I think there's starting to be quite a serious mispricing here. You're able to get a 14% dividend yield for below five year averages in valuation when there's not really any problems with the business right now. Yes, the wider environment is tough for this type of business, but the business seems to be performing adequately. It has reasonable liquidity. It looks fine. I don't think the short seller report is holding water for me. And I don't trust Ninja Research as I would trust Hindenburg or Muddy Waters or one of the more reputable, long-standing short sellers. Again, only time will tell. Be happy to be proven wrong with this either way. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'm of course not a financial advisor, so you should do your own research and due diligence. All of these allegations are exactly that. Allegations, they are alleged. And Ninja Research could be the best short seller in the world for I know. But looking at its history, I think it's important to put it in a different category to the likes of Hindenburg or Muddy Waters or more respectable and long-standing short sellers. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Comment down below if you want to tell me what you think of Arbor Realty, what you think of other similar businesses in this industry, what you think of the short report. Let me know what you think. I'll see you again next time.